Hey YouTube, how you guys doing today? Kevin here coming back at you with another video. Alright, so uh, what you're looking at is a CDI unit from a KE100 modified to fit a KV75. Now I use this same ignition system on my KD80, my KM100, and my KE100. Okay, this ignition system is available from 1996 to 2001 is when it was made. You can also get it on Suzuki DS80s, like in the 90s. Um, so it's made by Nippon Denso. However, this bike is a Mitsubishi, but the basic plate is the same. So uh, let me go in and talk to you guys a little bit about what I had to do, what I did to get this to where it is right at the moment. All right, so what I did was this bike originally had a uh, points ignition, okay? Right there, you can see the breaker points right there and the condenser. And then this is your timing mark right here for when it's idling. And there are two timing marks on the flywheel. There is one, uh, where is it located? Yeah, right here. Right here on the bottom of the flywheel. And then there's another one on the top, which coincides with that red line right there. Um, they are in the exact same spot. And basically, when the engine's running, those two marks have to line up while it's spinning. How do you tell if it's how do you tell if they're lined up? Well, I did a video on it already, but I'll show you guys already. Use a timing light, and of course, you got to use a 12 volt battery with the timing light. So you hook up the timing light to a 12 volt battery using the two alligator clips, and then you clamp this right here onto the spark plug wire. And then it'll pick up the pulse and it will flash at the exact same spot where it fires on the plug. So um, what I did was I drilled a bunch of holes all the way around to find out what position it was firing correctly in. There's the points plate for that. And I found on the very end one, it would, that's where it fired. And uh, I was dead on. So I got it, so it fired right on that point. Bing, 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 every time. So then this right here became just a junk plate. I had to file down to, you have to make this area right here, it's the hair wider, to accommodate for that bigger coil. And then, so what I did was I took a regular flat file. I filed here and up top here until it fit into it and then I could bolt it in. Then I used a chainsaw file and moved the holes inward so that the coil would fit and I have the proper air gap. Then, there on the back side of these, there is a screw hole right here. That screw hole right there is for your clamp for your electrical. So then what I had to do is I had to get it to where it was, you had to turn this all the way around there, and you can see right here where I had to drill a hole. So that hole right there is for the clamp on the back side. And that is a four millimeter tap using a, um, what do you call it there? A number 30 drill bit. So a number 30 drill bit for the number, um, for the four millimeter tap, I tapped that out. Then I drilled my holes here and here for the, um, you know, using that as a template. So I drilled my holes and then I chamfered them. What does that mean? What does chamfer mean? I'm going to show you guys what a chamfer bit looks like. This is what it looks like right here. I'll put it against my hand so you can see. And that just makes the hole for down bottom. Okay? It makes the, it make it all belongs it, you know. So that's what I did for that. And then I was able to make that beveled edge on these two screws and use the factory screws. So you see there's no points, there's no wiring for the points, it's all ripped out. There's two charge coils always in here. This one's for the lights, right here, which is a completely separate circuit from your ignition. And then you have your ignition. Now, it's not the same coil as your ignition. However, how it works is you have your electrical and then the fine threaded one, right here, the fine wired one is for your um, ignition system. And this goes to your, um, from here to your points, to your, uh, from here to the condenser to your points, and up to your CDI, I mean, up to your ignition coil. So I had to replace the ignition coil 
and this coil right here, but I used the same factory wiring. I cut all the old off and I put new um, heat shrink on here with and kept the factory connectors. So that is how that is. Then when I put it all together, I checked to make sure I had all the air gaps, nothing was touching. One of these sides right here were touching, so I had to grind it down a little bit. Um, just filed it to make sure I have a nice air gap and that nothing is rubbing. Make sure that there is no electrical touching on the center part there. And it actually all came out very, very well. I am very pleased with the way it came out. You guys have seen this on this bike already when I first did it. Um, but it wasn't zeroed in. So the bike you heard run with the CDI, but that was before it was timed. So now it's timed. And it will run a whole lot better. And then, of course, you got your regular flywheel that fits over it and gets torqued down. So, I wanted to do a video and explain to you guys a little bit about what I had to do to make this work. Um, on a skill level, I would say this is about an 8. Um, there's a lot of uh, agony and defeat involved with it. You have to, uh, a lot of playing around. I had an extra plate, so it wasn't that big of a deal. So what I did for you guys was, I basically drew it out, and the distance between the holes are 58 millimeters. Okay, so I, I measured it in millimeters because everybody has a millimeter, uh, one of those little float rulers, which is what you can use to measure it out. Um, using a float ruler, you can uh, measure it out 58 millimeters, and a lot of people watch it from other countries. So 58 millimeters from center to center. These are the original holes. You can see how much I had to move it to accommodate where it's going to be firing. Um, so there's quite a difference in where it fires than where it was. I mean, you're talking like two and a half inches right there, you know. So it's pretty down close. It's, it's pretty far. So um, we we're able to zero that in, got that all nailed down. And now the spike is a CDI. So it has a fresh rebuild. And it has a CDI ignition. Now, a lot of people ask me, Kevin, why did you go for CDI? Listen, I have had a lot of help getting the parts for this, okay? If I had to get this stuff on my own, it would be months, months. Some of the stuff that I got, I couldn't even get, all right? So let me just put that out there. I've got a tremendous amount of help. The last thing I want to do is try to find points for this thing. Um, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> okay. So now when the bike is on, when the motor is on the bike, I don't ever have to worry about taking off this cover, the flywheel or the cover here, except to change the sprocket when it wears out. And that's it. That's it. And I don't put that many miles on my bikes. So you know what? This is going to be a nice, perfect build. Whew, I can't wait to get this thing done. So we got the uh, CDI done. We have the engine back together. We've got the oil pump on. we got it basically all buttoned up. The only thing left we have to do is the cylinder repair. And, um, and then we can pop that on there and be done with that as well. Thank God. Right, guys? And to uh, my friend who's helped me out with this, thank you once again. So we have a lot of cool stuff coming up. Oh, I can't wait to fire this bad boy up. Oh, man, I can't wait. So we have... We've got some stuff to do. we got the Kickstarter on. we got the oil pump. The, uh, the, what do you call it? The, the factory line hooked up. We have a lot of stuff going on with this bike. There we go. We'll take that up right there. All right. So, um, we're, we're getting there. We're plugging away at it. You know what I mean? So... But this is uh, the CDI. I wanted to show it to you guys what it looks like. Again, you guys have seen it before. You guys have seen it in, in use. Um, and the spark plug I'm using, before I show you the spark plug real quick, remember the cylinder head with the cracked uh, coolant fit that drives me nuts? We have our new head without any broken fins. So that's cool. And the threads are good. And the plug that we're using, now this, this bike right here takes a um, an NGK, it takes a 
B seven H uh B seven eight uh B yeah B seven H S or something like that. This one is the plug that we use in. It's an iridium plug. I don't know if you guys can see the number or not. The focus is really bad. But I'll read it off to you. There it is. Iridium B R seven H I X. I X is for the iridium. We're gonna use this plug um with this bike and for a couple reasons. We need for this ignition system a resistor plug. This is a resistor plug and it's a long lasting plug. So we're going to get some stupid miles out of this motor without having to do any, um, what do you call it there, any modifications. And you can see how the plug fits right in there. It's perfect. And then this will be on the front as well. So, very, very excited at the way this bike is coming out. The uh, engine is back together, guys. Back together. So we have it back together. I am super, super duper excited about that. And um, I, I couldn't have done it without my friends and the help that I had. And guys, I've never had this in my first KV75. And get the manual if you have to do what I did. Get the manual. There is so much information in there that you're not going to figure out. All right. And you don't want to put stuff together backwards on this. You don't want to put things together incorrectly, backwards, wrong. You don't want to skip things, leave things out, especially thrust washes and... Um, that sort of thing and it shows you what to look for so you know make sure you get all that adjusting the clutch all that it's all in that manual you need to get that manual it is gold it is the bible of this motor so please get the book because that's where the information is that's what's going to help you with with these projects i'm telling you so we have the carburetor already cleaned for this bike uh, we have the um, cylinder left to fix so i have to actually take this cylinder right here this one with the broken fin yeah this one has a broken fin so this is a bad cylinder right here it's all scored up on one side so we are actually going to flip this over and we're going to take a saw and cut off the broken part of the fin and have it welded to the other fin and have one cylinder fixed so that's how we're going to fix that. And then we're going to um, paint the whole thing so it'll be nice and black. You won't even see the repair and where it's underneath. It's not that big of a deal, but I know it's fixed. So we have the cylinder to fix. And then we have, um, what do you call it there? Cylinder to fix. Put that on. Piston, rings. We got all that. We got the head gasket coming. We got the uh, chain sprocket. And then we're good. So and that's where we're at. So... Uh, oh, and I got to cut, I got to make gasket material for here. Engine's not leaking, so that's good. So we got to make the gasket cover for here. And um, that's it. That's where we're at. So anyway, guys, I am off. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And um, sorry about the mess. Made a big mess. And now after I get off this, I got to uh, go ahead and pick up my mess. So more, more, more fun, huh, guys? All right, I'm out. You guys have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye.